Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review. This is another Pink Noise session, so I probably shouldn't be doing this intro thing. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, just kind of chilling out, hanging out tonight, and I thought I would jump on stream to talk about a couple of things. So for starters, I've got the file FH7, the new file in for review, and I'm not planning to do a review of that right now. I haven't actually unboxed it yet, but what we could do together, I figured, is unbox the FH7S throw it up on my measurement rig, get a frequency response, and see what it looks like on Squiglink. Um, apart from that, I, there's another thing I've been meaning to talk about, which is just my target frequency response. And um, it's changed. It's, it's a little different now than it used to be. And I kind of wanted to talk about how I got here, why it is different, and then kind of just introduce you all to the new target for the people who are interested in it. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. Like I was mentioning, or should have been mentioning up front, this is going to be a much more casual stream than my typical live stream. So folks that are here in the live chat, Alex B. Uh, Quecky, hey, what's up? Uh, good to see you there. I'm, I'm going to try and, and keep up with the live chat uh, in real time rather than just waiting for it at the end. But, well, okay, no promises, no promises. We'll, we'll do my best, but... Like I mentioned, like I promised up top, let's start by talking about the file FH7S. And I've already got fingerprints on that box. <clears throat> As is somewhat typical of file, they've got some very, very fancy packaging with this little foil embossing. Uh, and, and, you know, they've got diagrams of dynamic drivers and stuff. Is all of that interesting? I mean, I think it looks pretty cool, but what's more interesting is the actual specs, which that is not the specs. That is just my face up close. This is the specs. Um, so it's a single dynamic driver for balanced armature hybrid IM. No surprise, FH in file parlance, the H stands for hybrid, I believe. Um, so if you see any FH from FIO, it's going to be a hybrid driver setup. <coughs> and um, I mean, that's that's interesting enough. Uh, I have previously reviewed the FH5S, so this is the FH7S, and it's interesting they actually have the same driver configuration, I believe. Uh, hold on, let me do the math. I believe they have basically the same driver configuration. Um, so that's not necessarily what's, what's bigger about this, because the FH7S is actually positioned higher than the FH5S. In fact, we can jump over here to FIO's website. I've got this linked in the description if anyone's interested in checking it out for themselves. This is their website. This is kind of like their marketing spiel about the FH7S. I guess I haven't said this up front. This is a $400 IM. So I think the FH5S was $300. So this is a price up. Maybe it was only $250 too. So this is, this is a bit of a step up. What's going to be different about it? Again, the driver configuration looks like it's basically the same, um, but if you dive deeper into it, you might find that specific drivers are different. What I'm actually really interested in. All right, here's a bunch of, here's your marketing mumbo jumbo. Uh, the seven is worth the way, yeah, okay. Um, the, this, is, this is all you know fairly typical. What I am particularly interested in is, duh, duh, duh. oh, interesting, they claim they've got four exclusively customized Knowles drivers, okay. This is what I'm interested in. So they've got this feature. They're calling it a notch filter. Uh, and supposedly this eliminates sibilance. So it looks like they've introduced some a bit of plastic or something into the, the nozzle of the IEM or just before the nozzle of the IEM. Ostensibly is going to help with reducing sibilance and that kind of um, frequency resonance and I'm pretty interested to see if they actually accomplish that. I don't know that that'll show in, in, free, in the, the measurements. I'm, again, curious to see if that will show in the measurements. Like, would I see maybe like a, a recession around, I don't know, like five to seven K, which is kind of where I associate sibilance with. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty interested to find that out. So we will unbox this and measure it. But for a, a second, I'll jump back into live chat because I promised. Uh, Cam G is saying, why can't file improve on aesthetics? I mean, look, they've got they've got a look, right? Here's the FH7S. It is a look for sure. Is it a look you like or, or don't like? Uh, it's going to be certainly up to personal preference. I think it's a little bit extra. I think I mean, that's kind of my opinion is it's a little bit on the extreme side, but I don't know. I don't hate it. There's certainly much uglier IMs out there. Definitely their stuff always looks like it's well built. 
Um, so they've got that going for it. Uh, da, da, da. Quacky asking, does deep insertion mean the IM nozzle itself is deep or does the ear tip being deep count as well? I mean, I guess it depends on what context you are talking about it in. Um, I mean, typically if I'm talking about an IM being a deep insertion IM, uh, it means that the IM fits deep and that's gonna be the tip or, or the, um, the IM itself. I guess if the tip is like especially sticks out much further past the, the nozzle, I might say that, but all right, well, that's, that's enough for now. Oh wait, real quick. Eddie Mead saying, I can't tell if I think it looks super cool or super ugly. Well, let's find out. So let's crack open the box and let's see what this thing looks like in the flesh. Okay, put that to the side. What, is that? what does this even say? Born for music, I believe. Okay, well, that's good. That's what I intend to do with it. Got your instruction manual and you've got a very handsome presentation here. So in this case right here is, it looks like the same. Oh, am I even gonna be able to get this out? This looks like it's gonna be the exact same case that we've seen on some other files, including like the FD5. Uh, the FD7, I believe, also used this exact same case, which is a very nicely built case. Um, but frankly, it is a little bit large for my typical uses. But you do have a, a magnetic flap down there, and I do love my magnetic flaps. I wish I could get a magnetic flap in my, my underwear or something like that. Um, looks like we've got some tips, a couple different sets of tips. We'll pull all this stuff out and examine it in close in a little bit. But as you can see their case, they've got a little placement for your earpieces. So it's definitely a premium case, but again, a little bit larger than I typically well, like, let's pull this out and uh, see if they've hidden anything else in this packet. They indeed have. So they've got a box full of tips. This is actually kind of exciting. And then they've got a couple of different uh, tuning nozzles. So I think what well, they've got bass, treble, and balanced, and they've got them colored. Let's see. Red is here. Green is here. So white, the balanced one, is whichever is the one that they've got pre-installed, which I guess I would expect. So I've got that. Is there anything? That's not, that's just, all right. Nothing else fun in there. So let's throw that to the side and take a little bit of a deeper dive into this little accessories package that we've got here. So like, uh, again, with some other previous files I've gotten, they are including this MM MMCX removal tool, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've also got a magnetic cable tie, which I think is nice. I've never actually really used this, but um, it seems like a thing that I should use. And I don't know. I like it. I like magnets. What, 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 can, I, what can I say? Uh, here it looks like we've got a swappable termination. This is a 4.4 millimeter balance connector, which uh, I guess is indicating that the cable this thing comes with is gonna be swappable. Interesting that it's only the 4.4 and that they have not included. I'm gonna assume that there's a 3.5 installed on here. In fact, yes, there is a 3.5. So there's no 2.5 millimeter uh, balance termination. That's interesting. <clears throat> okay. Let's, uh, let's throw away the silica. Now I can eat that later. And let's take a look at which tips we've got. Man, there's a, definitely no shortage of, of ear tips here. Um, oh my gosh. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through all of these ear tips, but we'll do our best. These are interesting. I don't think I've seen these before. This might be Fio's new ear tip. I feel like I recall seeing something about that. It's got a, um, a very thin, very light gummy silicone i think on first impression i quite like the feel of that silicone it's nice and soft actually uh, the nozzle the board looks like it's maybe medium large not quite a large board but medium large and then you can kind of get a sense for the uh the shape and size these are a little bit more um they're a little bit more i don't know what do you call this it's like a little bit wider and narrower at the the the, the tip than your average tip um so that's interesting to see. And that looks like in this package, I'm guessing these are gonna be spin fits. In fact, I just saw the spin fit logo. So they are indeed uh, a set of spin fits. So plenty of premium quality ear tips here, which is nice to see. These look like, uh, I don't think they're quite CP100s. I'm not sure exactly what model number that is. I'm not the, 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 the spin fit library expert, but they do look like some decent tips, put those to the side over here. 
Uh, Hobby Talk, I see you saying, I like two pin better for durability, but MMCX twists make uh, making fit so much easier. Oh yeah, so what you're we're talking about, right? This little connector right here is for removing MMCX connectors. So um, ostensibly this cable is going to be MMCX versus a two pin. And um, what you're talking about is that MMCX connectors will rotate. We'll, we'll take a look at the earphone in close in a bit. Um, they'll rotate, which can actually be a boon for fit. Uh, real quick, we'll take a look at which tips we get in here. And this looks like the pretty standard file range. Uh, they've got your bi-flange tips, which I'm not a big fan of these, but uh, I don't know, that small one, no, it does look too big. Um, they've got a vocal, bass, a balanced, and memory foam. What's interesting is I actually did measurements of, I think it was the file FD3. Um, it's, up, it's up on Squig Link. I did measurements with all of these different tips and whatever whatever effects they're expecting of uh, vocal and bass uh, I did not seem obvious to me that that's what was going on so I don't know my general thought on terms of like how ear tips change sound is it's really going to be dependent on your ear so I try not to make a lot of uh, generalizations like these are all a bunch of generalizations and I I don't know Maybe the vocal tip will actually sound more vocal forward to you, but I think it's just as likely to not in my experience. All right, let's take these earphones out of this case. This is, see, this is where I think, honestly, this is a really attractive looking headphone. Um, I think in the pictures it didn't look so good and their marketing material is a little bit transformery. Not that I don't like the transformers. I love the transformers. Um, but here in the flesh, in person, I gotta say that is, I think a pretty attractive I am. Holy moly! And it's got it's got some weight to it. It's got some heft to it. You can see that the thickness on it is thick. It is a little on the chalk side. And we'll be interested to see how it fits back here around the back. You know, not super custom molded. This looks pretty typical for Fios hybrid shells. Um, but then back here, you've got the grills, and they claim I think some sort of some open backness to it. Um, to be honest, I don't know that open backness and IMs really means that much, at least not in my experience. I'm sure it matters if you're actually doing the design and building and tuning and stuff like that, but when it comes to the listening experience, I've never really noticed that it means much difference. Da, da, da. All right, let's see. Eddie Mead, I see you say that cable looks a little concerning. Let's, um, let's take a look at this cable, all right? And this looks like this is, you know, again, pretty typical of Fios premium cables. It does have... Um, they're swappable terminations, which I'll punch in on that so you can take a look at. I actually really like their mechanism as bare bones as it is, is you just, you just twist it. It just unscrews, right? I think. There you go. I'm not going to break it. Uh, you just unscrew the sleeve there, pop out the, the tip, and then ostensibly swap on the, the, the termination that you prefer. So I generally actually like this because um, even though it's not the slickest, like I think Dunu's system is a lot slicker. Um, what I do like about this is how compact it is, right? Once it's all put together, it basically looks like the same size as your average 3.5 millimeter termination. And I, I'm a big fan of that. So um, I dig that. Uh, the rest of the cable, let's talk about that. So I think this is definitely on the the premium side, like the materials feel quite nice, but as you can probably see, it's a little on the stiff side. And this is again, fairly typical of Fios cables. I don't know why. Um, the cable that they included on, I think it was the FD7, was actually a really nice and soft cable, but their other premium cables are just a little bit, a little bit stiff for me. And you can see that they'll, I don't know, they're a little bouncy. Uh, it's a nice cable for sure, but you can see it's also maybe a little bit memory prone. Um, so there is that. Uh, you have a nice and small Y split though. Looks like the chin cinch is super functional. And of course you've got your preformed ear hooks. And as we were talking about MMCX connectors, this is that rotation we were talking about, which can help with fit, All right? You can kind of position it with the two pin cable. You don't get that kind of rotation. So kind of a, a pro and a con, I suppose. But yeah, let me go ahead and throw these things into my head real quick for a bit of a fit test. I suspect this is gonna fit like a lot of other Fio IMs, Fio hybrids specifically, and yeah, I would say uh, it does. So there we go, that's what it looks like inside my head. Um, Size-wise, I would say this is medium, medium, 
maybe medium large, but basically a medium. It, you know, it appeared pretty chonky, pretty thick um, front to back or well, side to side, whichever, whichever of those dimensions made sense for you. Uh, it looked a little bit thick when we were looking at it on the table. In the air, honestly, it doesn't feel especially big or chonky or thick or anything like that. You can see it's fitting pretty well into my concha. And uh, comfort seems like it's gonna be fine. There's no sharp edges or anything like that. But I do think that fit security is okay. It's just gonna be okay. And that's pretty par for the course for Fios hybrid IMs, unfortunately. I do wish they would get a little bit more uh, custom molded with their fit, but I don't know. That's not too bad. So that is what we have inside the box. And I guess the next move for us is gonna be to throw it up on the frequency response measurement rig and see what the squig looks like. But real quick, let me, let me hit up chat and see if there's anything um, going on that I need to respond to immediately. Da, da, da. Uh, Eddie Mead saying it looks like a goth campfire audio product. Interesting, interesting observation. Da, da, da. Alex B, someday someone will slap a fat Sony 16 millimeter driver on a hybrid. Yeah, so the, the dynamic driver that they include here, I think they claim it's like 13.6 millimeters. So it's definitely on the large side, but yeah, Sony's definitely got some of those, some of those chalker DDs. <clears throat> Get some tea early. No, I'm saying ooh, magnetic flaps. I think that might be the first time I've ever said ooh. Will. <clears throat> oh, and non, you also prefer two pin. Okay. Um, Hobby Talk, just asking generally, are MMCX hard to remove? A lot of the times they can be. Uh, I personally, I guess I've gotten good at it, so I've never, I've never personally found a need to use a tool like this. Um, but they can be pretty tight. Usually what I just find is like hold hold the, the MMCX connector like this, nice and firm, hold the IM nice and firm, and just kind of give it like a, a little bit of a wiggle while you, while you pull it out. And that's usually been pretty reliable for me. But yeah, some people have issues with it. And I think people just, I'm definitely applying some amount of force there. And I think a lot of times people are spending, you know, $400 on an IM. They're pretty wary of applying a, a bunch of force to this thing, especially if it's a thing that uh, uh, removing MMCX cable is not a thing that they do all the time. So um, I can understand why companies include these little, these little tools, but they've never been that helpful for me. Hobby talk asking, does open back hurt the isolation though? I mean, I'll give it a quick test. I'll just warn like this is, I'm in my office. It's pretty quiet. The only thing I can really hear is the fan and my computer running. So I don't know that it's gonna be the best test, but I can say that as I'm talking, my voice is definitely still occluded. It still very much feels like I have an IEM in my head. I can hear the fan on my computer. So I don't know, maybe it's, a little bit less isolation than typical, but it's not its not a significant difference. It's not like the difference between an open back and a closed back headphone. Uh, Cam G, real quick, uh, T question. I was gonna save T questions until later, but this is an important one. You're asking me, do I put sugar in my tea? Absolutely not, absolutely not. That said, the tea that I'm enjoying tonight, it's like a, it's like a cinnamon herbal tea, so it, it kind of tastes a little sweet, but there's there's no sugar in it. And when it comes to any other tea, like, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a sweet a sweet tea kind of guy. All right, so let me uh, pull in the microphone and connect it over here, and we're gonna measure the frequency response of this FH7S. So we're gonna do it again with the, the stock the stock nozzles, which are the balanced ones. You can see it has the white ring around the outside. Uh, so we will measure it in balanced form. After this measure, or after this, this live stream, I will um, actually spend some time and measure it with all of the nozzles and that'll all be up on Squig Link. But for now, just for the sake of brevity, we'll see what this thing looks like with the balanced. And typically, I don't find the, the filters make a huge difference, but they will be they will be um, noticeable. Okay, let's see. What was I looking at? What was I looking at? Let's see. Go over to here. Okay. We're looking at RU. This is my software that I use for measuring frequency responses. Let me see if I've got this set up correctly. I did not um, test 
extensively before starting this live stream. This is a little haphazard. I apologize if this doesn't work correctly, but let's try it. And we got a frequency response of da, 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 the FH7S. Okay, looks like I've got it inserted a little bit too deep, so I'm going to come down here to the table, pull it out a smidge, and try that again. We want to get that peak right there to line up exactly with 8,000 hertz. That looks pretty decent. That looks pretty decent. So we'll call that our L channel. Uh, and I'll move over here, uh, swap into my right channel. Our insertion depth seemed like it was about like that. Worked out pretty well. And now we'll measure the right. looks pretty good in fact look check take a look at that that channel matching that actually looks pretty decent um you know part of the reason i do the well actually the only real reason that i measure both the left and the right channels is so that we can see what the channel matching looks like between the units like you want you want these lines to basically line up on top of each other as best as possible um let me go ahead and save all this stuff and export it real quick. And I will upload it to squig.link in real time so you can take a look at it with me. But let me export first. FH7S R. And then export the left channel. Now, this is thrilling, thrilling television. Okay, and if I come over here, which you cannot see, but I swear, I promise you, I can see. We got the squig. All right, I'm gonna upload it to squig, squiggle.linkle, which if you're not there yet, wait, hold on, hold on one second. Don't go there right now. Hold on, hold, hold on, not, not right now. All right, not one second, one second. One second, almost, we're almost there. Okay. Uno minuto. Okay. It's time. So, uh, da, da, da. let's go back over here to a computer browser, internet browser, and go to squig.link. Um, Safari, you and your mysterious caching. There we go. There's your frequency response of the file, FH7S. Again, this is using the balance nozzle. Um, I will later go back and measure it with the bass and the treble. Was it bass and treble nozzles? Yeah, um, I'll measure it with those later. But for now, we can start to just take a look at this frequency response and up against my former neutral target, start to come away with some hypotheses about what this thing might sound like. So. Let's see, let's start with, uh, let's start with, with, I think the elephant in the room down here. Um, this low end is quite, it looks a little bloaty, I'll be honest. Um, you can see my, my, my dotted line down there, that's my neutral target. Uh, and we're looking at mid bass and sub bass frequencies. It is quite elevated. Um, seeing elevation in the sub bass usually is not a, 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 a reason for concern. Um, you can kind of do with a lot more sub bass frequencies and not really have any detriments on the rest of the frequency response. Mid bass, however, uh, especially going all the way to 300 hertz, um, this is very much getting into mid range bleed territory, um, just looking at it based on the frequency response. Now I have to actually listen to the thing and see what it sounds like because I'm surprised all the time by what these things sound like and how my interpretation of the squig does not actually lead to uh, my exact uh, uh, listening impression, but first impressions looking at this, it looks pretty, pretty bassy and thick in the low end. 
Um, mid-range looks, you know, about on par. I would say upper mid-range is maybe a little bit chill, but it's interesting that they have decided to go ahead and peak at around 3000 Hertz. Um, this is kind of similar to what we saw on um, the Dunu Vulcan recently. So that, that pinna, that ear gain area looks a lot like like that and then over here in the presence region this is where I kind of expected to see maybe that notch filter at work is you know between 5 to 7k and it does look like it slopes down I don't know if that's because of a notch filter or something else in the, in the tuning um, but then here in the mid treble you do see a fairly large and pronounced um, resonance peak now I say this all the time you seeing a resonance peak here is not necessarily an indicator that you're gonna have spiky you know annoying trouble or anything like that, but you know, sometimes, sometimes it is, right? If I take a look at the file FH5S, this is what the frequency response of the last file hybrid that I measured looked like. And it had this big spike in the, in the treble and the treble was indeed uh, quite uncomfortable to listen to on the FH5S, hoping that they haven't quite done that here with the FH7S. But again, I got to actually listen to it to tell. But yeah, that is your frequency response and uh, unboxing of the FIO FH7S. If you're interested in checking it out, I do have links to FIO, I think, in the description down below. And if I don't yet, I'll add those eventually. Um, but that's not going to be the end of this live stream because we've got other topics to talk about, including uh, let me get it, getting to some of your some of your live chat questions. So let me go back to the live chat and uh, and see what's going on.